In this problem, we're continuing the work that we did with defining the models for the dollars and cents data, and we're asked to provide a rough but accurate sketch of the graphs of each function and also look at the practical domain and range for each function. So I'd actually like to start with part C here because the information that we have about the models will help us to fill in this table. So remember that domain deals with input and range deals with output. I'm going to go back to my calculator, look at my y equals, and remind myself of the two models. This is model for A, this is the model for B. I'm going to go to my table and remind myself of the starting values for each and the ending values for each. For my practical domain, time in this problem begins on December 31st, that's the zero date, and ends on January 31st. So time runs from zero days, that's December 31st, to January 31st to 31 days. And that is the case for each of our different models. So the practical domain is the same for both A, B, and C. Now what's going to be different is the practical range. The values for the practical range will be determined by the outputs that go along with the inputs for the practical domain. So when the input is 0 in part A, in option A, the output is 1000. That's my starting value for my option A of T. When the output, excuse me, when the input is 31, the output is 32,000, so the maximum output for function A is 32,000. So here's my practical range for function A. A of t is bigger than or equal to 1,000, less than or equal to 32,000. Those are all the values taken on by the output for function A. If I look at function B, so those values were here in Y2, when my input is 0, my output is 0 0.01. So that is the starting place for my outputs for function B. And my ending value is the very large number that is my output when my input is 31 in function B. So 2147486.48 because I don't have room to put that whole number up here. So the output values for function B range between 0 0.01 and this 21 million et cetera, et cetera number here. For function C, that was our option where we got the $30,000. That was the constant function. So my output only has one value. That is 30,000. So figuring these things out ahead of time will help us when we go to our graphs. So let me go to y equals now. And let me be sure that for y3, I have entered the option 3, which was, or option C, which was the 30,000. And then I need to go to my window. The so window is going to be tough for this problem because there's such a big difference in outputs for option B. I'm not really going to be able to effectively display 21 million and what's going on here with 30,000 in the same window. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to take my x min starting at 0 to my x max of 31. That's my universe of input values. Those are my practical domains for each of my functions. So let's operate in that environment. For my y min, I'm going to go ahead and start at 0, even though I have values that are bigger than 0. This one's pretty close to 0. So let's just start at 0. And then I'm going to go up to 35,000. That's going to enable me to see what's going on with a and c. I will not be able to visually check in with all of what's going on with B. So we're going to have to make some assumptions when we draw our graph here. Now let's hit graph. So there's A, there's B, and there's C. So I'm going to switch tools here, and I'm going to draw a little bit. So the Ys go up to 35,000 on our um, calculator, 
I'm going to let them go up a lot farther here. So I'm going to start things a little bit lower. So we're going to say that's the thousand starting point for A. And then let's take that, you know, let's go about like that. And that's going to be A of T. And then our B of T, let's bring that to about here. Excuse me, that is our C of T, is our 30,000 function. And then our B of T is so very close to the X axis all the way along here, but realize that the first output value is 0.01, so it does start here. I'm not really going to be able to draw that effectively here, and probably neither will you. So I'm just going to kind of start the B here and try to make it accurate for this bottom part and then show kind of what's happening. It's going to go crazy way up here. There is B of T. So that's pretty accurate. Not labeling any of the ordered pairs here. We can label the axis T equals days cents December 31st, and this is the ending value of 31 here, and this output we can label as uh, money in our account. So that gives us a sense of placement. So we can see from the graph then for part D, based on the graphs, which option would give you the most money after 31 days. That would definitely, once again, confirming what we found in our data table, option B would give the most money.